Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to edit an AI file without using Adobe Illustrator. So to be clear, uh, the whole purpose of this video, and I'll kind of show you here, uh, is I got this design in multiple different uh, formats. I have it in PDF format, I have it in uh, PNG, JPEG, um, AI, and EPS. And I'll just show it to you right here. So it says coffee, morning. Um, this is a designer of mine was sending me this idea. And I'm actually starting to look into creating more, uh, you know, working with more designers to see if I can kind of speed up the system. And I'm not specifically talking about uploading to any marketplace platform like Zazzle or Redbubble or anything like that. More to my website. I want to up, you know, increase the amount of content on my website because my SEO strategy has been working pretty decent now. And I could share some of that with you guys in a future video, maybe even tomorrow's video. But I got the idea to do this video because there's an AI file here. Now, from an SEO standpoint, I would not be uh, this text right here that says coffee morning doesn't fly from an SEO standpoint. I, I wouldn't have this on a t shirt or um, on an apron or whatever it is. I, I just wouldn't have it. It doesn't matter what product it's on. Um, I wouldn't have the text here. So I want to change it. If I can, if I, if I want to change it, I have to use an AI file, uh, or excuse me. Yeah. An AI file. And in order for me to do that, I need to have some sort of software that can edit AI type files. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So there's a software here called Inkscape. Now to be clear, I don't use any Adobe products. Maybe it's a mistake on my part. Who knows? Uh, but I just don't. Um, yeah, I just don't. I never got into it. So I'm going to go over here and hit download now. And this is a software called Inkscape. And it can essentially edit AI type files. So I'm going to download on Mac OS X for this uh, kind of uh, tutorial. I have the M1. So let's go ahead and download this. And let's just go ahead and wait for it to download. And just a little FYI, this could take some time to download. Um, so we'll just give it a little bit of time. It seems like it's actually going relatively quick. Uh, so I figured, let me just pause my screen and we'll wait for it to be over. All right, guys, so it's done downloading. Let's go ahead and double click on it here. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the application to my applications folder. So you can see here it's loading into the applications folder. And once again, guys, I do not do any kind of like, I don't even want to say complicated, typical things that designers don't do, I don't do. The reason why is because I focus on the outcome. I want speed and I want to be able to do the work without having to exert as much effort as possible, basically decreasing the amount of effort. So here I have Inkscape. Let's go ahead and open it up. And... Let's see what we get here when we open up the application. Uh, I do remember uploading it or using it on my one of my other computers, and it was really slow. Maybe I was doing something wrong. It could have been very, very possible that I was doing something wrong. And uh, but, but let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm going to open up a new document here, and I have this new document. And this is effectively Inkscape. Um, here, it's actually pretty quick. I don't think I have any complaints. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this AI file, drag it and drop it in here. And I get this little, um, I guess you could say pop-up, right? It says import via internal library. Editable text is reconstructed. Pages, layers, and margins are preserved. Object fills and strokes are recombined and gradient meshes are converted into tiles. And here we can basically oblige or agree with what we're doing now you could see here we are missing the font that this is supposed to i guess you could say be so it will come off as just like a image type thing so right so i'm actually surprised it's not freezing up or it's not messing up in any kind of way um so what i can do is i could just delete the text here right so i can highlight rather highlight here and delete and delete and delete and the thing is is like because i don't have the font this is going to be viewed as um excuse me this is going to be viewed as uh kind of like an image right K kind of not not exactly the same but 
kind of like an image. So I can take and delete, right? And I, I remember, you could see here, I'm slowly deleting on stuff. Now, once again, I'm no Adobe expert. I can go over here and hit cut on this, or even let's just go ahead and hit delete. Let's higher right click, highlight right click, and look for the delete button. You could tell I'm not uh, an expert at this, nor do I even use it. Um, and I could sit here and learn the whole process, but I just, you know, I'm thinking, okay, what's going to cost me the most amount of time? Now, this is pretty decent just the way it is. I can export it just like this and then add in the text here. So I can go over here and file export. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, couldn't you have done this? with the other files, like for example, uh, let's see, let's pull it up here, um, the, the JPEG or the PNG, and the answer is absolutely. I could have cleared out the, the background here, I could have cleared out this section, turned it into a design, and made it a little bit more useful for me that way. I didn't necessarily have to use Inkscape. There are certain times, however, where I may potentially want to change a color, change an element. So for example, like you see this cup here that's white, Technically, I could fill it with a different color, right? I could do certain things. Now, once again, I'm I, most of the time I won't, uh, but this is just a informative video for those who do want to edit things like this. A lot of people might take some time to convert the image into an Adobe type file or maybe even an SVG so they can edit the image, a vector. Uh, I have no interest most of the time in doing that. Um, the only time I actually had to do stuff like that was when I had my uh, clothing business, my very first business, and I had a manufacturer, and this was the first manufacturer that I ever dealt with, which was in India at the time, and he told me, send me the images in vector format, and that's where I started to learn what vector format was. I had to figure out how to convert my images into vector, and uh, the cool thing about that business is with that business, it wasn't like graphics like this, but it was more logos, text, uh, st stuff like that. And I would send them over and he would print them on the clothing and I would get samples and then I would tell him to iterate and fix certain things. And yeah, that was a long, long journey. And um, many years displaced from that uh, experience. It was a good experience. I did really well with that. But once again, that was a long time ago. There are many more easier ways to get things done. And I know some of you guys love using Adobe. Some of you don't. Uh, I don't. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it whatsoever. I think you just have to do with what works for you uh, or, or what works best for you personally listening to this. Uh, this is, a, I guess you could say, a free alternative compared to Adobe. I don't think... I mean, there's a, there's a large community around Adobe for sure. There's no question. But a lot of the things that you could do in Adobe, you can also do here. But there are some things that you can do in Adobe that you can't necessarily do here. Uh, but it's okay. I mean, you know, it is what it is to each their own and what they choose to do. I just figured I'd put, put out this video so you guys can see how to do it. Um, because, you know, somebody out there might use it. But I know me personally, I'm going to stick to my strategies of developing images and art and things like that and you guys already know I've, i put out all that information in the design course uh and once again i focus on speed right i focus on speed my goal is not to be artistic it's not to be um you know the top design all the time uh don't get me wrong there are some times where i really go out of my way to try to create a design a certain way but other than that i'm focused on speed and for me um the amount of time that it would take to learn a platform like this and learn how to fix things and things like that. And and trust me, I'm not against learning, you know, but it just does take a little bit of time. But it is useful. You can see here, you can highlight different elements and do d different things. Uh, and I'm sure the people who sell on Etsy as well, you love to use stuff like this because you could sell digital files. And a lot of people do look for that SVG style, that vector style uh, type of image. So, uh, without further ado, I think, I hope this video helped you guys in some sort of way, and I'll talk to you guys soon, and thank you guys for watching, alright? Peace out, bye.